Hello, I'm Rui Lazareno, Pro Tools Expert, Certified Instructor. The main purpose of the headphone mix in Pro Tools is that the artist in the recorded room can have an independent mix of the session to his or her taste without interfering with the control room mix. So let's get down to business. In order to create a Pro Tools headphone mix, we need to have an audio interface that at least has four individual outputs. Most of the time outputs one and two are used for monitor speakers. And in our case, we'll be using outputs 3 and 4 to create a stereo headphone mix. Okay, first we have to go to the I.O. setup. I recommend to save your current I.O. settings using the export setting command to make sure that you can restore a previous configuration you already created. In the output tab, you should be able to see the actual available outputs of your interface. In my case, I have an interface with 8 outputs. For the purpose of this tutorial, we'll be only using 1 and 2 for monitors and 3 and 4 for headphone mix. And I rename the outputs to physical out 1, 2 and so forth. As I mentioned, this tab only shows you the available interface output. In the past versions of Pro Tools, you could assign the physical outputs in your tracks directly, but now you have to take an extra step. So let's go to the boss tab you should be able to see something similar to this view. As the name indicates, this is the boss tab. Here is where you can find, create, or erase all the bosses in your session. The left column shows you the available bosses and to the right you can see the title mapping to out. Here is where we enable the interface outputs that will be sending signals. By default, Pro Tools assigns outputs 1 and 2 to the now name physical output 1. If we click on the disclosure triangle on the right hand side we can see the available physical outputs that we can send the signal to. In this case I have 4 pairs of outputs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 and 8. Let's note that for every single boss there is an option to enable it to send the signal to all available interface outputs. So if I enable any of the bosses, in this case boss A34, it will show me the available outputs that I can direct the sound to. So in this case I will select physical output 3 and 4. Just to make sure I know what boss correspond to what output, I will rename them. By double clicking on the A12 boss and then I type monitor. Now I double click on the bus 3 and 4 and type headphones. Now we can close the I.O. window setup. If we did this procedure correctly, when we go to the mix window and click on the output of any track, we should be able to see the monitor and the headphones outputs. Now that we have our I.O. setup ready, we go to the next part creating the actual headphone mix. Uh, I have a demo session just with plain sine wave signals in all four tracks, so no sound will be available. First, we create a stereo auxiliary track. I like always to rename a track, so I know what the track does in this case, I'll rename it as Head Mix. I'll make sure I solo save the track by holding the command key in Mac or the control key in PC and pressing the S on the auxiliary track. This will prevent the audio to being interrupted on the headphones if any of the tracks on the session are soloed. On the output of the auxiliary track, we select headphones physical 3 and 4. This will direct all the audio received in this track to the headphones output. Now we go to the input of the auxiliary track and select bus. Here it displays a list of the available bosses in the session. Select one that is not used, could be any. I just select bus 1 and 2. And to make sure I can easily find it, I rename it by right clicking on the input of the serial track. This will show me a menu. Then I select rename, and in this case I type head boss. Of course, you can type any other name that you like. Okay, before we continue, I like to take this action. This is to prevent sending high-level signals that can cause ear or monitor damage. 
So let's go to the Pro Tools Preferences and on the Mixing tab I select Send Defaults to Infinity. That means when you create a new send you have to manually raise the level to the desired volume without any worries. Perfect, let's move on. Ok, now we are ready to send all the tracks in the session to the headphones. I click on the first audio track name in the session. Hold the shift key on the keyboard and then select the last audio track, in this case audio 4. And this will select all the tracks in between. Now we add to all the tracks the head boss in the sense section. In my case I like to add it in the last send of the track so I can use the above sense slots for other purposes. But it's up to you where you put the sense. The fastest way to do it is by applying the keyboard shortcut Option plus Shift in Mac or Alt Shift in PC. This will apply whatever we do to one track to all the selected tracks. So while holding these keys click on any of the sense. You see a menu? Select the boss option and click on the head boss. Now all the sends will propagate to the selected tracks. If you hold the command key in Mac or the control key in PC and click on the left part of the send, this will open the mix window for this particular send. Very useful. Now there's one more step we need to do. And it's putting all the sends in pre-mode. Pre-mode is what it does is that the audio signal received in the signal send bus is taken before it hits the track fader, or the faded track, whatever you want to call it, meaning that any fader movement, solo or mute of the track on the control room won't affect the headphone mix. So both are going to be completely independent. Okay. Now I will mute the auxiliary track so I don't hear the sine wave. So remember, I'm using the sine wave just to represent the audio flow. And of course, you will be using your own audio tracks. Now I go to my send faders, right here, and I start to send signal to the headphones. You can see as I raise the faders that the level on the head mix starts to raise. So you do this with all the tracks until the performer is satisfied with the mix. And because we set the buses in pre-mode, any changes or movements we do in the tracks while we're recording, like mute, solo, changing the level of any instrument won't affect the headphone mix. One of the advantages of having the head bus going to an auxiliary track is that you can control the overall level going into the headphones. I really hope you find this tutorial useful, so thank you so much, see you next time!